like that. In your uh, recent report, you talked about how a lot of people are expecting a significant pullback in the metals. But if you look at uh, history and what we saw, for example, in the 2008 pullback in metals, we've really already seen that pullback. Um, and now it seems like we might be off to the races um, from here, your perspective on where we are. That was, a, that was a point I made in the weekend report. What I did is I showed a monthly price chart of gold during the last bull market from 2001 to 2011. And it was a laborious eight-year process up through about 2008, where you'd go up nice, nice advance, and then you'd spend a year or more going sideways with dips and dips, you know, just bore the heck out of you. And uh, finally, in that October 2008 sell-off in gold, which was sympathetic with the stock market crash. By crash, what I mean is something that takes 30% off of a market in a matter of two weeks. Okay, that's what happened in 29, happened in 87. In October of 2008, the S&P was already a year off of its high. It had been declining for a full year. While well, gold had been going up, by the way, during that time. And during that, basically, late August, early September, and especially October of 2008, there was this crash type event in the S&P. And sure enough, gold had a sympathetic drop, though it had been opposite the S&P for the prior year. So, But anyway, it did have a sympathetic drop. And it was one, when you look at the price chart of gold back then, there had been a range. It hit 1,000, backed off, hit 1,000. These are all-time new highs now. And in, it was July of 2008, before, before that drop, you hit 1,000 for a second time. And then that pullback finally sold off enough to where on a price chart, you finally took out a prior prominent low. First time in years that gold had had a sell-off that actually took out a prior low. So in effect, it had a cleansing drop. As soon as it finished that drop, boom, back to the highs. Okay. Meanwhile, S&P continued down until 2009. Very similar thing happened between 2020. 2022, you come up to 2070 price level, backed off, came back up to 2070 again in March of 2022. So you, again, back up to the high for the second time. And it was the pullback from that March 2022 high that finally got out of control in when? September, October of 2022. And you took out a bunch of prior lows, just like what happened, like you said, in, in 2008. As soon as you did that, boom, you're back to the highs. So it was a fake out. That was a cleansing drop that was similar to the 2008 debacle. It was over with so fast. If you were on a long vacation, you missed it. Okay. Everybody seems to think we have to have another one. Why? You just had one. Okay. Uh, I don't think the stock market is about to crash, by the way. I think the stock market, if it's going to crash, which I think is a possibility in this bear market, it doesn't always occur in bear markets, you know, stock market. The noise of a crash. To dot com bubble never had a crash. Okay. It's going to take some months of downside arm wrestling in the stock market before you finally get it to levels that could generate a sharp, rapid sell off. Between now and then, I'm suspecting you got several months of arm wrestling decline. Now, there's some levels below the market, but they're down there. You're not threatening them right now. So I don't think there's any near-term jeopardy in the next couple of months of anything like a crash in the stock market. Now, you get a little closer to the election, yeah, maybe. So gold, I don't think, is threatened by that, that phenomenon again. Um, and between now and the next couple of months, I strongly suspect gold's going a lot higher, and silver and miners especially a lot higher. And as you noted, if you go back to the February low of this year, Look at the gain that silver's had from that low to the current price, even though there's been a recent pullback. Look at the percent gain in the miners from the February low to where they are now. And look at the percent gain in gold, and you'll find gold is much less gain on a percent basis than those two, those two subcategories. So anyway, uh, I'm not worried about a sharp sell-off in gold. Yes, you're going to have week-to-week -week drops here and there, but I think we're in the acceleration phase, meaning... That part of the bull market where most of the bull market gains of the entire trend at eight, nine years, in this case, we're eight years old as well, uh, will be compressed in the final year of the move. Most of the drama, most of the percentage. And I think we're at that. We're, we've crossed that line now. I think we're entering the acceleration phase. 
can you explain a bit more of the outperformance we've seen in silver and miners with respect to gold? I know the gold silver ratio has declined a bit during this slight uh, consolidation here. It's increased, but mainly down in the last uh, month or so. We measure silver versus gold a different way than other people do. We, what we do is we divide the price of silver into gold. And if you do that, silver right now is just below 1.2% 1, 1 of the price of gold. If you ever close a month, frankly, if you close a week, in our opinion, uh, about 1.21%. So not far above where we, we've been laboring the last several weeks. Uh, you're going to break that spread out. Now, what I mean by breakout is this. If you go back to 2020 high, when silver vastly outperformed gold in that surge, there's been a relative performance staircasing downside action on that spread where silver has been losing value relative to gold. But you could plot it. It's a beautiful trend line. It's like a five-point rally trend line. You hit the line, you back off. And so we're now pushing to try to get through that line. You do the same thing with GDX, the miners ETF versus gold. You have the same sort of declining pattern since the surge in 2020 when miners beat gold. It's already breaking out with this month's action. So <clears throat> we think that that's going to be a, a the final signal that tells us that, yes, we are in the acceleration phase. Because you go back and look in that late 2001 to 2011 bull market in gold and silver, it was in about 2010 that silver beat the pants off of gold. It just suddenly erupted and went to 50 bucks, you know, from like 20. Uh, so it, it was it was not only acceleration in both metals to the upside, but at that point in time, in the final year especially, and this is true in 1979 to 80 as well, which was the tail end of that bull market, silver vastly beat gold. So while it might have bored you during much of the bull trend, up through 1979 or up through, let's say, 2008, where silver was eh, sort of keeping pace with gold, but really wasn't beating it. It was in the last year that silver went electric. And we're at the threshold of that right now. So anyway, it's uh, it's going to be an exciting year and probably a lot less than a year to, to gain most of what I see coming. And are there any price levels that you're looking at right now in general for silver uh, to finally make that breakout? It's, well, it's achieved its momentum breakouts measuring its price versus certain long-term averages, like a 36-month average, which is like a three-year average. Uh, it's not the crossing of that average that was so important, but when you plot an oscillator, where you plot the monthly action of silver in its relationship to, let's say, a three-year average or a 36-month average, you get a different pattern on the chart than you do when you look at the price chart of silver. That broke out just above $25, and we're where? $27.30 or so right now. So we're well above the momentum breakout of silver, the level that says you're re-engaging silver, you're re-engaging to the upside. The, the three years of boredom is over, okay? Uh, the, the only lag metric we have now is what we were just talking about, the spread relationship between silver and gold. It just needs a decimal or so more, and that spread will join and say, yep, silver's going to beat gold. And that's basically our final signal. Uh, we think there's other things going on in other markets that are influencing this. And, uh, you know, the bond market, stock market, U.S. stock market in particular, we think it's likely topped out of this recent teasing new high that it made due to five or six stocks primarily. <laughs> we all know that story. Uh, we think that, that uh, we got a sell signal the first trading day of April that said, OK, that rally is over. We're, we're rejoining the long-term damage that had been done in early 2022 at prices not far below where we are right now, in fact. So I think that that, that teasing rally to a new marginal high in a few select parts of the stock market's over. Now the process is that way. That will no doubt <clears throat> influence data points, which will influence the Fed. And believe me, they're probably eager to start cutting. They're just looking for an excuse. Uh, why? Uh, I'm not going to allege political bias on their part, but I've heard from various sources on news programs and so forth that the Fed governors definitely don't want uh, a, a Trump victory. Uh, so they don't want to do anything that would be uh, 
uh, harmful to Biden. And uh, so, you know, if the, if the economy, if the stock market needs some saving, because that's one of the few things that that the current administration could point to and say, look, the stock market is doing good. Uh, if all of a sudden that's not the case in the months prior 